Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Once again, I am filming from my mom's house today as I am babysitting my sisters this week. So that is why everything looks different. But I'm not actually hating it because I have time to myself to film. It's quiet and this is actually the perfect room to do so. So can't complain. Today's video is a story time video and the stories today are going to be a little bit different. They're going to be about the injuries that I have suffered over the years and I don't know what inspired me to do this video I just kind of thought of it I think it's because the last injury I'm gonna tell you about happened at this house and since I've been here it's just kind of got me thinking about it and you'll see why when I tell you it a little bit of a disclaimer before this video I am going to go into somewhat graphic detail about these injuries and so if you're a really squeamish person might want to click away I don't know it's totally up to you but they kind of get progressively more cringy as the video goes on so I would say the last video is probably the goriest grossest injury I've had while the beginning one is a little bit more tame so it all depends on what you think you can handle um, if you just want to hear a couple of the stories I will put the timestamps down below into the info for you so the first story we're gonna get started with happened to me in the eighth grade I was 14 or so years old. I was a cheerleader for about eight years of my life, starting in elementary school all the way up into about halfway through high school. So cheerleading was kind of just my thing. I didn't play any other sports. And in my town, it was pretty competitive. There was never like a plateau where you were expected to be at. You were always expected to be learning new skills, stretching, and just bettering yourself as a cheerleader. Our high school team was like, several years state champions and there was just a lot of high standards so from a young age i was constantly being pushed to do more and more things and one of the things that was kind of required of everybody was to be able to tumble once you got to high school you were pretty much expected to know at least how to do a standing back handspring or a round up back handspring if you didn't know how to do that you had a way less chance getting onto the high school team so we all started tumbling in about fifth or sixth grade and I was not good at it. <laughs> I hated my tumbling class. Could not stand it. I went once a week and despised every moment of it. It took me I think from the fifth to the seventh grade to get my round off back handspring. I never could do a standing back handspring and I know that a lot of it was mental. Like I know I had a wicked mental block because I was just to hurt myself so that is why it took me so long to get my round off back handspring but once I did that I was progressing pretty quickly I was I had gotten my double and I was working on my um, tuck and I had performed my round off back handspring many times in competition like I had just gotten used to doing it but for some reason I think it was because my family at the time was like really having financial problems I had to take like a month off from tumbling and this occurred right before tryouts for my eighth grade middle school year uh, for competition cheering in the winter and I just kind of forgot how to tumble. We did tryouts, my coach knew that I had tumbled before so I made the team no issue but then one of our first practices we were learning our routine and she asked everybody that could tumble to go to the corner of the mat and basically just show us our best tumbling pass. So of course I get really nervous because like I told you, I had not tumbled in like a month. I hadn't been able to go to tumbling class, I hadn't been able to practice at all, and so I was very nervous and I told my coach that I really wasn't comfortable tumbling and that I wanted to go back to tumbling class before I did my um, round up back handspring on the mat at cheering, which bear in mind, we didn't have a spring loaded mat. It wasn't all star cheering. It was like on a gym floor, basically with just the blue mats over it. If you've done cheering, you know what I'm talking about. And so there was no kind of cushion there and I knew that. So I was really uncomfortable. And my coach basically said to me that I either needed to do it or she was gonna like pull me out of the routine and she was insisting upon me doing it she knew that i could tumble and she pressured me into doing it 
despite me being scared. I don't advise you ever tumble when you're petrified like that because it really messes with your head and messes with your technique. Everything you know goes out the window. And I went into my round off, went into my back handspring, and I went over backward crooked. My left hand came down first, followed shortly by my right hand. But because I went over backward crooked, I put all of my weight onto my left arm. And as I was like mid back handspring, I felt my elbow snap. I had this blinding pain shoot up my arm. I knew it was broken and I instantly stood up and walked away and I'm holding my arm like this. My coach didn't really like see what was going on. She was like, oh, see, told you you could do it, whatever. And I'm walking away and a lot of people like saw what happened. So they kind of knew like something was up. I went up to my coach and I told her that I thought that my elbow was broken. And she kind of looked at it a little bit and she was like, I think you're fine. So the remainder of the practice, I cheered with a broken elbow because it was in fact broken. There was a piece on, I'll show you guys this. There's a little bone right here. It's like a knob basically. And it's on the joint and it broke off from my regular like el like arm bones. It just broke off and was free floating in there. We didn't know this until I think two days later because my coach proceeded to tell my mom that it wasn't broken. She didn't bring me to the hospital. I ended up sleeping over somewhere that night. She didn't see how bruised it got. Like nobody realized except for me. Um, and we ended up going to the hospital and I found out that it was broken and I was in a open top like removable cast for my entire eighth grade cheering season. I actually taught myself the routine by sitting on the floor and like watching them do the choreography. So luckily by the time competition season rolled around, which was at the end of the winter season basically, um, I was able to jump right back in. I just couldn't tumble obviously and I couldn't stunt. So I was a spotter and it was kind of boring, but I at least was able to go into competition and I had like no worries because I had no stunts that I was responsible for. So it was good and bad, um, but that was the end of my tumbling career. I did not go back to tumbling. I refused to do it after I broke my elbow. It was just too much of a hassle. And yeah, I was forever mad at that coach and I still to this day, like I blame her for just pressuring me into tumbling and made me, making me feel like I had to. And then basically just brushing off the fact that I broke my elbow. The second story takes place in college, my sophomore year of college. And I will say that if you haven't been to college, you're gonna have years that are more messy than others. My sophomore year was that year and I just went out all the time. I partied really hard my sophomore year and I'm not really proud of it looking back. There was a lot of really questionable bad nights that I had. This next injury takes place on a particularly very bad night. It was the Thursday before Columbus Day weekend. I knew I had work on Friday morning but I was then planning to leave right afterward that next day. So I wanted to go out on Thursday night. We went to some friends of ours that lived in an apartment nearby our dorm. Things proceeded to get really, really messy very fast. I don't talk a lot about drinking on my channel, but I did drink in college, I did party in college. And so I found myself in a very crappy predicament and drank way too much wine mixed with hard cider. And I cannot mix different kinds of alcohol. It's like really like my falling point every single time is like, I'm good, 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 good. And then I mix and it's like, pew. so this particular night I had mixed what I was drinking and I was dumb. And a group of my friends that lived in this apartment it was a group of boys. They had a taser. I was very afraid of the taser. I, every time it went off, would jump up and run away from it, despite they weren't coming at me with the taser, but in my mind, they were. They were coming after me, attacking me, and I was just afraid of it. I didn't like the sound it made, and don't ask me why they thought playing with the taser was fun. They were a little bit crazy, but, yeah, so we were sitting there, my friends and I are sitting on the couch and once again they start playing with this taser and they kind of like came towards me, not like at me, they just like got, were pushing into each other like one kid was trying to tase the other and 
they were just too close for comfort. So I got scared and I got up and I tried to run to the other side of the room and my friend's foot was out and I tripped over it. And as I tripped, I felt my foot kind of twist. I was wearing little, um, I think Keb style sneakers, I'm pretty sure. I wasn't wearing anything like crazy. I wasn't wearing heels. I think it was little sneakers. But anyway, very, very little protection for my feet. And so it twisted as I went down and there was like a brief moment where there was nothing, I didn't feel anything. And then all of a sudden I started feeling this intense pain in my foot. And my first thought was, I just broke my foot. I started drunk crying, which is so embarrassing. And my friends were actually really mad at me, my, my roommates, because they thought I was overreacting. They were like, you're fine. Oh my God, like we need to get her home. She's just so, you know, just over the top dramatic right now when I was in fact in really bad pain. We went home, the next morning I woke up and I could not walk. I had my sneakers on and I remember trying to get them into, get my foot, it was my left foot. I remember trying to get it into my sneaker and just like crying, like having to bite on something because it hurt so bad. I went to work, came home, my friend picked me up for us to go home for Columbus Day weekend and the second I got home, I had to go to the hospital because I thought my foot was broken. So uh, we get there, I waited like four hours. I was so upset. They told me that I had a hairline fracture in my foot and it was gonna take about eight weeks for it to heal. And they gave me this giant boot that was way too big for my foot and crutches. So I showed up to our town's homecoming game that day on crutches and we proceeded to cancel all of our weekend plans. This was me and my ex. They set me up with an appointment on Monday to see an orthopedic specialist to kind of determine more closely like what kind of cast I was gonna need and whatever, the boot was temporary. So we canceled all of our plans. I went all weekend on these crutches. It was very upsetting. Then I went to the orthopedic specialist that Monday and the med student who was there proceeds to put my x-rays up onto the light and goes, what do you see? There was no break in my foot. The hospital told me I had a hairline fracture. There was no fracture at all. He basically told me that I pulled all the, the ligaments in the side of my foot, which is why it was like bruised. It was black on one side. And he said basically that I just needed to go back to school and take it easy and wear comfortable shoes for like a week. And sure enough, after about a week, it healed and was fine. <laughs> so I didn't break my foot. I was just told I broke my foot. And I actually lost an entire holiday weekend at home with my ex for no reason. I could have easily gone and done whatever and just been very careful, but I was told I had a hairline fracture, so. Okay, last story, because this is gonna be a decently long video, I'm realizing now. This is the gross story, just as a heads up. This one takes place the year before my senior year of college. I was still living at home and had spent the whole last week of summer getting all my stuff together. During the day, I think my mom had left for some reason and my stepdad was working in his office and I was out in the garage. I was painting a shelf for my new apartment and I, for some reason, had to go inside. I was barefoot. I went inside and I was doing something. I don't know, I was distracted. I stepped out of our basement door. We have a basement door that opens up into our driveway, like below the house, like into the driveway. It's kind of hard to explain. It's like a walkout basement in the back. So I walk out and I pull the door shut behind me. It's like a metal garage door. I close my foot in it entirely. Like I just close my foot in the door and it kind of caught at the bottom where the corner was and it's metal. So it's decently a sharp like edge. I, I like telling this makes me nauseous. <laughs> I felt like a like boom, boom, like as it went over my foot. This is my left foot again. Something about the left foot, I don't know. Well, maybe it was my right. I have to look at the scar. Hang on a minute. No, no, it was the left. <laughs> my foot wasn't completely caught in the door. It just got shut in the door and it kind of like, I like pull it forward and it slaps, slaps onto the pavement. And I just see the front part of my foot, like right below my big toe, just hanging off. 
and I'm standing in the driveway and I'm watching, I'm telling you, it's gross. I'm watching the blood pool over my, like around my foot on the pavement. And I didn't really feel the pain until I looked at my foot. And then it just started this searing pain up into my foot. I panic. I run inside, we have a mud room where the um, laundry is, and I'm in there and I'm standing on the tile and there's just blood pooling all over the tile floor. My stepdad's office is in the basement right there. So I'm yelling his name. He comes running out and he just was like, oh my God. I was chalk white on the floor, hyperventilating, starting to go like, I was like in shock. So he wraps it in like eight towels and we drive to the hospital into the emergency room. They put me in a wheelchair. Luckily, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I really thought that like the whole front and underneath of my foot was hanging off. It wasn't, it was just really badly cut, like super bad. And it was cut down to the bone, but luckily there was nothing chipped, like there was no bone chipped. So all they did was they like numbed it and like they had to spray it, which felt so weird. And then I had to get stitches, which I had never had stitches before. I think I had five or six of them and it was just like a half moon shape right under my big toe, like right around that bone right there. I don't know if I should put pictures in, so there might be a picture here if I decide to put them in, but it's gross. So just picture me in the hospital, like covered in paint, covered in dirt from the garage, because this is what I was doing before this, and barefoot, my feet are like black from walking around outside, it was disgusting, and they're just like sewing me up, and I'm like, just, casually sitting there like three days before my senior year of college wondering how did I get here? <laughs> so ever since then, I am petrified of the basement door. I step out completely with both feet before I pull it shut behind me now. Every time I go out that door, I think about catching my foot in it and it makes me nauseous. Like, ooh, so disgusting. It was the craziest, like grossest feeling ever and it just makes my stomach turn. It's disgusting. Sorry if you guys found it just as disgusting as I do. I don't know. So those are my standout injuries that I've had over the years and I just wanted to share those stories with you guys. Please let me know down below if you've had any injuries in the past and what you did and how you got that injury. And I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you click the subscribe button and click the little bell beside the... And click the little bell to... And click the little bell beside the dis <laughs> And click the little bell next to the subscribe button. I got it. If you're interested in my videos, that will notify you whenever I post, which I try to do more and more often now that I have free time. Thank you guys so much that have stuck by my channel and watched me. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye.